Hello and welcome to another out of spec motoring road trip. You join me in Norway. We are in Oslo. You can see the ID buzz right here behind me. I've been having fun with this the last few days, but it's actually time to go on a crazy adventure. We are going all the way from here in Oslo all the way to the North Cape, the northernmost drivable road in Europe, deep in the Arctic Circle. And we are taking this Tesla Model 3 Performance with, of course, Nokian Hakapolita snow tires loaned to us thanks to Marcus Beal. I'll talk a little bit more about that situation. You know, we borrowed a car from him for our last European, or I should say Norwegian adventure. And now we're going all the way to the Arctic Circle in this Tesla Model 3 Performance. So we just dropped off the ID buzz at the Volkswagen press office, and it's time to head deep into the north. Here is our ride. It's a pretty much brand new Model 3 Performance. It does have some kilometers on it. I think something like 15 or 20,000 miles equivalent. It's got the new headlights. It's got a light bar, perfect for the Nordic lifestyle. We got the big brakes, Model 3 Performance with Performance Upgrades Pack, so big battery. We're on Nokian Hakapolita R3 tires. They are studless, but that should be okay for our trip. Hey, Alyssa, how you doing? Good. You ready to go up into the north? Mm -hmm. It's gonna get real cold. We're gonna to go to the northernmost charging station in Norway, and it might actually be in the world. We have to look, um, but we got some stuff to do. So let's get everything, we got everything out of the buzz, I should say, into the back of the Model 3. This one has the auto trunk build quality, am I right? Not all fitting together. But the thing that I love about Tesla here is that it's just tuned so well. Battery heaters work great. They're proven platforms. We've done so many miles in Model 3, some of the best seats in the business, and I'm just really loving it. So let's take a look. We are charged up to 86% state of charge. I haven't driven this car yet. You drove it over here. How does it drive compared to ours? Like a Tesla. Yeah, so no major clunks and things though? Mm -hmm. So better than ours then? I don't know. I haven't driven ours in a while. So. Okay. Yep. Well, I, I would say if it doesn't clunk, it's probably better. Right. Yeah, so let's take a look as to where we are going. So let's go north up on the map. So nice. This one doesn't have premium connectivity. That's okay. We'll just hook up our phone. And I don't think we need traffic data here in Norway. There's just kind of one road. We're going to take all the way up here to, boom, Honigsvag. I don't even know how to say that. There's only three stalls, I believe, three of three. Let's see what it says for distance. It's a long drive. One of our longest trips in, in Europe, for sure. It wants to go through Sweden. We can certainly do that, or we can go up the Norwegian side. I think we go up the E6 on the Norwegian side. It says um, in total, it doesn't give us a total distance, does it? Nope, just lots of superchargers. What happens if we just remove all charging stops? How far does it say it would be to get there? Let's take a look. Come on, Tesla, think, think, think. Interesting, they have an SOS call button. We don't have that in the US. Oh, it says it can't even get there without charging. So I don't know, either way, I think it's gonna be about 4,700 kilometers round trip, plus or minus. Mm -hmm. This is gonna be a multi-part series. And um, yeah, let me go through, get everything set up on the screen and then we'll hit the road. We gotta get some ESPA buns on the way out of town. All right, well, we got everything set up. Another Model 3 road trip. Pretty excited about this one. Just love these things. They're great cars. And so we are just gonna cruise up the E6 and we're gonna go to the Shell and ESPA to get some ESPA buns. We've driven past it a few times, but we've never been able to stop in. They should be open now. And then we're just gonna kind of continue up. We have no idea how long this trip is gonna take how really far it's gonna be, but we're going all the way up. I know we wanna stop in Tromso. I know we wanna go all the way up here to the tip. So it should be a cold one. If it's 45 degrees in Oslo, it was freezing last night here. So we're expecting some frigid temperatures. We'll see though. And uh, yeah, time to get going. So into drive, let's cue the GoPros and see you later ID Buzz. Thanks to Muller here for loaning us the car for a few days. They're the, I guess, official Volkswagen importer of Norway and we are heading off. We have arrived at 60% state of charge to the famous Shell station down there with the ESPA buns. We gotta give that a go. And uh, we're here at a Chem Power station. Now I'm pretty sure uh, because this is a recharge station, we can use our um, plug surfing card. So fingers crossed, I'm just gonna get this cable a little bit, I grabbed it the wrong way. So let's see if I can move it around. 
let's plug it in and then we'll see if our little card works. So in we go. Oh, maybe it's not in all the way. There we go. Blue. Good. Great. Now grab plug surfing. Now we don't really need to charge. We're at 60%, but um, why not? Right. Plus we can play around with, there we go. Authorized with these things. The thing that I love about chem power chargers is that there's one unit that splits the power between all of these. So there's an ID4 GTX charging over here and just beautiful views. The Marcus Beal Model 3 is looking good. We're juicing up. I can hear the uh, motors heating the battery. Model 3 doesn't really have a dedicated battery heater. What it does is it actually uses the waste heat from both electric motors, three and a half kilowatts on each axle to really pump the heat into the system. It's really smart. We also have some mud flaps on this thing. It's got some carbon fiber wrap. I mean, it's really got some cool things going on here. Interesting, we're only charging at 35 kilowatts. It could be a cold battery, but um, yeah, we'll see what happens here. Not the end of the world. And let's see what it says inside the car. We don't really need to charge. We're just stopping here, so we may as well plug in. You can see these are all 150 kilowatts. These are 150 kilowatts, but this one says 120 on the screen, so it must be doing some sort of load sharing. The ID4 is doing 78 kilowatts at 58%. Pretty interesting. But uh, yeah, there's also some slower chargers over at the Shell station. But hey, I love chem power stuff, so I wanted to come use this. Let's see how it's going in here. 34 kilowatts. Not going great, but not really the end of the world. We'll just let it charge a little bit. I can hear the heaters going. Maybe it's just a cold battery. So we'll let it warm up a little bit while we go get some Espa buns. Super nice here. Another Model 3 just parked in. Let's go take a look to see what it's like inside. Yeah, and nice that the chem power chargers are right up there. That's pretty sweet. Ah, a Rexton. Those are cool. I think a Chine another Chinese car. Those are pretty rare. Excited to see all the weird northern cars as we head up. But we're only about an hour outside of Oslo and already just amazing views here. Let's go inside. Uh, so we got some coffee. Yep. Got some buns. Yep. We, sort. we got the vanilla one. Look how dirty that e-tron is. They're all so dirty here. Yeah. Volvo's just as dirty here. Yeah, everyone keeps their cars real dirty in Norway. I like it. That, that means they're using them. Um, we got, yeah, two raisin and two vanilla ones. Uh, the charging speed did not increase past 35 kilowatts, but it is running the battery heater. I don't think the battery's that cold, so I'm thinking we're just limited on power for some reason or another. I'm not totally sure, but okay. We, we got buns. Who cares? Yeah. I mean, the <laughs> I like to try a whole bunch of different chargers, so we'll just hop charge at a charger on this trip. We got a long ways to go. We're just starting out. Yeah, we do. Yeah, about 60 kilometers down, another 4,640. Who's counting? Who's counting? <laughs> All right, let's go. I can hear the heat pump going like crazy on the app. It shows that it's warming the battery, but it's still only doing 34 kilowatts or so. We've only put in eight kilowatt hours, but would you mind hitting stop charging, Alyssa, in the charging menu, and then we can get going? Just click the battery in the top left. Nope, the battery. What? Yeah, just click the battery, not the number next to the battery. Yeah and then hit stop charging and unlock charge port. Thanks. Now we can go. It's possible I didn't plug it in all the way because I had some issues getting it in. Oh well, <laughs> let's go. It looks like it doesn't want to go up the E6. It wants to actually go up some back roads. So we're going to take whatever road this is right here. I don't know, looks pretty good. Nice and small and scenic. Looking forward to that. We should be in Alvdal at 3.30 p.m. at 18%, and then we'll be off to Stjordal. I can't pronounce any of these names, and eventually we'll figure out what's the best way to go to get up there, because I guess the car originally wanted to go up the Sweden route, and we wanted to do the Norwegian one, because I was thinking we would duck out to go to Tromsø, which is somewhere over here, I think. Anyway, let's go to Alvdal. So Kyle, what was your opinion on the Espa buns? Uh, Espa bumps were pretty good, I have to say, but I'm not sure if they were, like, legendary. They're literally just bread balls. <laughs> I mean, With, like, like that's good. sweetener. Yeah, it's I great. I mean, yeah, bread, yeah. There's different flavors, to be fair. We didn't try all the flavors. 
Who tried the two most popular fittings? Nope, they said their chocolate one was the most popular. We did not try that. Why didn't you get the chocolate one? Don't like chocolate. It was just like chocolate chips, wasn't it? I don't know. Didn't think about it after I heard chocolate. Well, there you have it. Maybe we messed up. No. But well, we also got some Espa soda. They said it was similar to this soda. So we'll. I have to eventually do a little taste test. It's like Fanta. Yeah. Also. Uh, Is it Fanta or Fanta? Uh, yeah, Fanta, I think. And we're just stuck in some Norwegian traffic as usual. We just everyone going real slow. Big rain. Go on the speed limit. That's right. Welcome to Alvdal. We have arrived at 14% state of charge. Thanks for switching halfway. Appreciate that. How was the drive? It's pretty. Yeah, it's beautiful. What are we trying to do? Trips. Tesla keeps moving everything away. Uh, huh. I totally did not reset this yet. Dang. But since last charge, we did 213 kilometers since we left Espa. We only used 41 kilowatt hours, but we burned a lot of juice. Maybe I'm used to Hummer EV lifestyle. We got really good efficiency, but I feel like the battery, this is a, the dual motor performance, should have the big battery. What? That doesn't seem so good. Anyway, let's plug it in. We've come over here to see what kind of speeds we get. You know, Alvdal is pretty interesting because you have the pull-through version 3s over here. These are all version threes, but then those are all version twos. And wow, it's actually icy on the ground. Whoa, gotta be careful where you step. Good thing we have snow tires. Probably should have studded snow tires. That would have been maybe a little bit safer. I'm gonna have to ask Alyssa to open up the charging port. So let's see, there we go. She can hit it. Open charging port. Cause it once there's a driver in the car, the little button on the handle doesn't do anything. Version three, in we go. Super light cable, even in the cold. I love version three cables. Let's see how fast we can charge this thing. Loving the spec. It's called the Batmobile Model 3 Performance, matte black with the Marcus Beal logo. Man, that's a good looking car. It really is. It's got the new headlights. Looking forward to trying those tonight. Wow, getting icy on the ground. Let's take a look at our charging speeds. 180 kilowatts, 190, 200, 216. That's what we're talking about. It did precondition on the way over here. Nice, 256, holy smokes. Most I've ever seen at a version three supercharger. How about you, Alyssa? Yeah, I would agree. Yeah, that, that rocks. So it says only 15 minutes to get up to Trondheim. I think we're gonna do dinner in Trondheim. So I'm gonna start looking for a place. I gotta get a video edited. So let's just charge up here, and this is not like a typical out-of-spec race road trip. We're taking our sweet time, sightseeing. You have so much dog hair in your case. Like, yeah. there's so many. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. In, you mean in my phone case? Yeah, blue hairs. I bring, bring, bring their locks of love with me. <laughs> they just end up places. And we've already tapered off 250 kilowatts, so it doesn't hold it very long. Uh, but that's okay, better than better than nothing. Let's let it charge up. Part of my love for Norway is all of the Scania trucks with the big lights on the roof, just full blasting. Nice old Model X over here using version two charging. There's our Marcus Beal Model 3. You can actually see some steam coming off the Model 3. See that, Alyssa? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it must be some condensation hitting the brakes or the battery, I'm not sure which, but she's definitely steaming up a little bit. <laughs> Starting to feel a little bitterly cold out here today. It's actually my birthday. This is the best thing uh, to do. Just an adventure in a Tesla, going somewhere fun. Nope, different video. Yep. So really getting cold out here. Loving the Tesla charging experience. Just plug in, big speeds, working great. Um, don't love how Teslas don't hold their peak very long. <laughs> I think we need to work on that charging curve, um, or they do, I, not me, I can't work on it. But um, yeah, next stop, Trondheim. I'm gonna edit some videos on the drive. Alyssa's gonna take on this leg for again. So big thanks to her. And Trondheim is just stop number one. I think we might stay over there, explore the city. We had some fun last time we were there. We didn't get to spend enough time. We do like Trondheim. And then with the trip, we'll continue northern or north from there. Can't even think or talk, just cold. Let's warm up in the car. 
We are charging at 50%, but only getting 105 kilowatts. And normally it should do a little bit more than that at 50%, at least our Model 3 performance does. So that tells me that the battery is probably a little bit cold at the moment. You can see it's 32 degrees freezing outside and the speeds here are so low, the battery doesn't really get a chance to warm up all that much. Uh, since I totally forgot to reset this trip, we're just gonna add 213 kilometers and 41 kilowatt hours to whatever the, t the final tally is. So let's reset the North Cape trip and yep, just keep on trucking once we charge for another, mm, we could probably leave now to be honest. Wanna do that? Yeah. All right, let's unplug and go. So Tesla is predicting a 13% arrival. It wants us to charge for another five minutes. I don't really see a need to do that. So there's charging stations everywhere in Norway. We were charging pretty slow anyway, and we are ready to get to dinner. So Trondheim, next stop, 6.30 PM. I'll make reservations somewhere. Let's have a good meal. Good meal? Good. You're, gonna, you're gonna make reservations? Too? Well, I don't know. We'll at least pick a spot. I don't know if we need reservations. Oh, you're fancy. Where are you taking me? No, I don't McDonald's. <laughs> no, I'm fancy. Where are you taking me on a lot of dates? Yep, that's right. We do a lot of McDonald's dates. Oh. All right, off we go then. See you later, Alvdal. Maybe we'll catch you on the way back. And we have arrived to Trondheim in time for dinner. And we are at, if I can show you, beyond the steering wheel at about 15% state of charge. A little bit nice and warm here in the parking garage and um did it look dirty that camera Alyssa? Mm, not really yeah i'm thinking maybe the camera is cracked oh yeah i think it is scratched or cracked because every time we put it in reverse can't see a thing well i should say it's just very blurry um one thing i love about norway is there's so many chargers everywhere every parking garage has dc fast charge or i should say ac charging and this one has dc fast charging the thing is we can't activate any of those AC chargers because you need to pay with a Norwegian specific app that you can't get unless you have a Norwegian security number, which is a little bit annoying, social security number. And then we aren't gonna go on the 180 kilowatt ones. It says 50 to 180, but that's mostly because we're gonna go to dinner. So after dinner, we'll charge up the car. So it'll sit at 15%, sort of calibrate the battery down low. I don't know how low this car has been driven, but probably not a bad thing for it to sit with a low battery pack. And then after dinner, we'll go uh, charge it up. But I just love Norway. You have Kona, IX, ID3, Ionic, C40, I3S, whole bunch of crazy stuff. I don't even know what this little thing is over here. Do you know what that is, Alyssa? What the heck? It's a city. That's what it literally says. It's an A city. I have no idea. It's a Ixam? A I X A M city. Hmm. Very interesting. But, and Polestar 2. Very nice. Anyway, let's go get some dinner. What do you say? Well, we just finished up a nice dinner, uh, pretty good spot. They have like a really nice harbor area with mm -hmm. a whole bunch of bars and restaurants lining, really kind of cool. Uh, and we've booked a hotel for the night somewhere over here-ish in this area, somewhere near Malvik. Yeah. But if we take a look at charging stations, um, I don't want to leave the car outside overnight at 12%. So I think we're going to run over here. This is a version three supercharger, pretty busy at the moment, but let's go to there. We'll charge this thing up to, I don't know, 50, 60, 70% state of charge. Who knows how high. And um, so it's just seven minutes down the road. And that way it can sit overnight. I checked on PlugShare. It doesn't look like our hotel that we're staying at has charging, mm -hmm. but it's very possible they do because I don't think we've seen a hotel without charging. Right. It's almost like there's so many chargers everywhere that no one even uses PlugShare anymore. Like most of the check-ins are like from 2016, the early days. And now uh, it's just like everything. Yeah, you just kind of expect chargers. Yeah. The, the other question, there's an E208. The other question is, can we activate the chargers? Because that's been a real problem for us as a foreigners. We can't download all the right apps and everything. And even if I put my phone in Norwegian mode, it doesn't accept American cards sometimes. So... Either way, let's go to the supercharger, put a little bit of juice in this thing. I just need to figure out how to get the heck out of here. I just think it's crazy that there's DC charging everywhere. DC, AC, 
It's all pretty wild. So why are we, are we back here? What was that? Why are we back here? Oh, I left my phone in there, so I just grabbed it. And here we are pulling in. That's the Tesla sales center, and here's a version 3 supercharger. There's also a recharge station just over here, which is nice. Um, but I think they only have older 50 kilowatt units in there, if I'm not mistaken. We have a Tesla behind us. Yep. So we can just go down and pick any one of these because uh, they're version 3s. You don't really need to leave a space between you and anyone else. It's funny that the lines aren't really painted yeah, I guess they are, but back there they didn't seem to be. Ooh, that Model X is low because that charge port's flashing pretty fast. There's the recharge station, 50 kilowatts max at that one, but they've been oh putting God, in a lot I of bigger ones. Yeah, this is the uh, backup camera. It's a little blurry, isn't it? You gotta turn hard. I have to turn hard. Yeah, you gotta go forwards. I gotta go forwards again? Yeah, it would be good to get some space with you in the car next to you. I can't see. Yeah, <laughs> you're gonna have to use the backup camera. There you go. Man, I really don't remember the Model 3 having such poor range. I mean, I know our car isn't great, but I feel like maybe it's the cold weather, maybe this the snow tires with these wheels, I'm not totally sure, but it definitely, um, it definitely isn't getting as much range as some of the newer cars that I've been testing. And uh, yeah, I mean, totally usable with this infrastructure, but surprised that we burned almost 10% to get here. I guess a lot of it was just sitting with the heater on in traffic, so that could do it. Yeah, so Tesla has this great new app. And so it says we arrived with five and a half percent. Then we burned 3.6%. Of course, I had we had to run back because I left my phone at the place. Interesting, it says we spent 2% on battery conditioning. So that heat pump really was maxing it out. And that's so we can get this fast charging here. 207 kilowatts, 214 and ramping. That's what we like to see. Big fast charging speeds, 230 kilowatts. 240. Come on, let's see a full 250. Can we do it? Yes. There we go. 251. Peaks and then it falls off, just like our Model 3. Maybe it's this battery pack. It's not as good as the brand new Model 3 battery packs. And this one, let's take a look at what this vehicle is. Has quite a few kilometers on it. 51,000 more than I originally thought but it doesn't say what year it is, but that's okay. It doesn't matter. We just did a quick top up, only about five to 10 minutes or so, up to 38%. That means we'll get to our hotel with 33%. That's a very healthy state of charge for the battery to sit overnight. And then we'll go to the Stordahl supercharger in the morning, which is over here. And that way we can warm up the pack, get all situated and settled and start the uh, day with a warm battery. That's always a trick for increased efficiency. Yep, you got to turn left here, Alyssa. All the way yep, here, right, right here. here. Okay. <laughs> Alyssa is not uh, not so good. There's no good road signs here, man. <laughs> really? It all looks really normal to me. No, like where, where we were stopped, there were no lines. Oh, so I, I see. No left to... turn lines. There was no nothing. I see. Okay. Well, um, Yep, so a little efficiency trick is to warm the battery up in the morning, but the other downside of that is it probably will take longer to charge in the morning because the battery will be cold. So, you know, pluses and minuses. I pace. What the heck? I've never driven under our hotel on a highway before. That's pretty cool. Have you ever done that? No. That's neat. So hard to miss that exit. Yeah, maybe we can even stay and I can watch all the cars go by. What do you mean stay? I mean, stay up in the center bit. Oh. I don't know. Maybe it's just a walkway. I think we go to the right and that must be the parking. We'll do a little quick sweep look for chargers, though. Charger. You see one? Oh, yeah, but that's not a ready one yet. But look at that. They re replaced a gas pump and put an Alpitronic unit right there. Oh, and there's another one right there. Just not installed yet. Or I should say installed, not commissioned. So sick. Chargers going in everywhere. Let's see if they have level twos around though. We just crossed the highway. We went basically underneath the hotel. Chargers. Yeah, they have chargers online over here. So that's pretty sick. So in the morning I can wake up early and we can full charge the car the there. What was that, Alyssa? Another one. Yeah, another one over there. That's pretty sweet. If they have a type two, we can just do it. We don't need to charge right now. No. What are you doing? You're just exploring. Another 
Nice. They are replacing gas pumps. That's hilarious. Yeah, replacing gas pumps and putting in EV chargers. Now, would you would you ever think that was going to happen? I don't know. That's pretty crazy. Have to get around. Yeah, that's pretty cool. All right, well, we'll see y'all in the morning. There's our hotel. We're going to bed. I am so tired. Well, good morning. Good morning. It's the next day. It is. It's around 6.30 a.m. We were up at the crack of dawn and ready to get going. So that is exactly what we're going to do is get some headway and use the most of the day because there's not a lot of sunlight here. So we want to maximize that as much as we can and get on the road to be able to see all the views or else if we're just driving at night, we don't see anything. So Also, you should explain what happened with our hotel last night. Well, <laughs> so Kyle had me pick the hotel for the first time this trip. It didn't go very well. Um, first, we went to the wrong hotel. That's where we left off. Right, yeah, yeah. We the went one that went over the highway. Yeah, we did not stay there. And honestly, I think this one is a little bit better than that one. So props to me on that one. And then um, but we- But this was not that nice. No, it wasn't. It was a, a Best Western, I and mean, usually in the States, Best Westerns are either like hit or miss. Yeah, this but was a double miss. This was, it was a pretty good miss. It was a really, really small room, but uh, it was just kind of stuffy and... Yeah, and you should also explain, like, the hotel last night that where we left everyone mm -hmm. um, was on the way to this one. Yeah. So we didn't go out of our way because of a miss putting in the wrong hotel in the nav. We went, we're actually in Stordal, which is near that supercharger we planned to charge at this morning. Mm -hmm. um, however, if we flip the camera around, we can show everyone the plan for the day. So the plan for the day today is to go to Boda, I think is how it's called, Bodo. or Bodo, but I think it's actually pronounced Boda, something like that. Anyway, all the way up here is the plan. It's uh, about a 10 hour drive or so. Um, and we were thinking we would charge up here. We're literally right by the supercharger, a little bit past it. But the car thinks we can actually make it up here to Lavanger. So that's where we're heading to now. It's 45 kilometers away. We have 31% state of charge. It's preconditioning the battery pack. So that's our plan is to head there. We'll be there at 7 a.m. And uh, off we go to that supercharger then. So leaving the Best Western Sure Hotel, which, sure, <laughs> is a place to stay, but not a very good one. And we have arrived at 15, 16% state of charge, getting 217 watt hour per kilometer on that trip. And that is pretty good efficiency. What is going on over here? There is a Enyaq blocking a supercharger, perhaps? Hmm? Weird. Um, I love these pull through stalls. These are great. What's interesting is in Europe, I don't know if you guys know this, this is how the Model 3 charges on CCS Type 2. I can find where it's supposed to go because it's not lit up. There we go. But then the older Model S and X have this plug here. And then there's an adapter that they can upgrade if it's an older one, or I guess it comes with the newer ones where they can use CCS. But that was a weird adaptation of Type 2 that allowed full uh, DC charging. thought that was a pretty cool thing. Uh, what's interesting is I believe there are 180 kilowatt chargers just over there. Um, but I don't think there's a way for us to activate those. There's also a recharge station here, but that those are only 50 kilowatts. So you have a parking lot with 22 kilowatt AC over there, 180 kilowatt, 50 kilowatt, and then 150 kilowatt version two superchargers. Just an insane place. Uh, there's also a Circle K where I think we're gonna run and get some coffee, but uh, I think we're gonna do a pretty deep charge here is kind of my plan. Just kind of get situated for the day go run some errands, get some snacks, and then, uh, yeah, enjoy the scenery as the sun comes up. Really cool drive over here. So many EVs commuting into Trondheim, just one after another, it's crazy. This Model 3 also just received a software update that um, I think is pretty smart. It does charging-based preconditioning now, so it doesn't just target a flat temperature. It's a more dynamic thing, and I've been saying Tesla needs to do this for a while, so I noticed it didn't really precondition that long to charge here at this charger, and I think the reason is it knew it was going to a 150 instead of a 250 kilowatt charger, so it made the drive a little bit more efficient and uh, definitely noticed preconditioning shut off way early compared to older logic, so nice work, Tesla. Just get the battery warm enough. 
for the amount of charging that we're going to get. We are just walking over at sunrise. It is amazing how late in the day the sun rises. So these are 50 to 200 kilowatt. Interesting that it's badged that way. I've never really seen that. Maybe it means 50 kilowatt. Well, it says 50 to 200 for CCS and then 62 and a half for Chatamo. Perhaps it, it's a load managed site, but they look like they're all individual chargers. Not totally sure. I just want to see if we can actually activate these. I don't think we can. Yeah, I think we have to plug in first anyway, but would be a good to know if we can use this Evini, Evini. How would you say this? Evini. So then this one's 50 to 180 kilowatt. That's a lot of power for a small box. I don't think we have these units. They look like a ABB units perhaps. Actually, you know what? I think these are the ones that Circle K is installing in the US, these 180 kilowatt ones. Those are pretty cool. And then these have four posts. Ah, I see why it's 50 to 200. Just depends on how many people are plugged into one. Wow, that seems pretty crazy. Look at this. So you have one, two, three, four posts. This one says 50 to 200 kilowatts on the Chatamo. There's no way that's 50 to 200. What? Okay, that makes no sense because the other Chatamo said 62 and a half. Maybe they just badged that wrong. I, Chatamo, as far as I know, can only go 100 kilowatts unless maybe that's the next gen of some kind. Really thin cable on that one too. Huh. Looks like Alyssa's ready to go shopping. Very interesting. Love looking at all the charging infrastructure around here. So many more chargers in this parking lot than the one gas pump. <laughs> Isn't that crazy, Alyssa? There's literally one gas pump and then a million chargers. Welcome to Norway. It's cold out here this morning. Yeah. We did a little bit of a deep charge here, 94%. Uh, the Circle K was actually not an actual business Circle K or store Circle K. It was just uh, two pumps. So um, we're gonna find something along the way to eat, but Kyle just took a little nap and now we're unplugging, getting ready to go. The sun is out finally, and so the adventure begins. Yeah, let's do this thing. Got a little bit of a nap in. I did not sleep very well last night, so that was very much needed. Beautiful views while charging, isn't it? Uh -huh. And look, there's another one of those little city things. I love those little bubble cars to your left a little bit, Alyssa. Yeah, I know. Take a look at that. <laughs> We are over here at a Circle K and uh, just getting some coffee and stuff this morning. And take a look at this, some Mare chargers, but I think these are being pulled out of the ground because uh, these things look old and kind of beat up. So I wonder if they'll be replaced, but two 50 kilowatt units with a 22, I think they're gonna probably put uh, new chargers in. That would be my guess. It's already got the power run to them. We have arrived to a very frosty Mosgen. I don't know how to say it. Uh, let's take a look at our efficiency on the way over here. Alyssa drove quite a bit of the way. Thank you. And uh, yeah, we switched on and off a little bit here. Let's take a look. We did 316 kilometers. We used 57 kilowatt hours and it was 181 watt hour per kilometer. So pretty good efficiency considering the temperatures, uh, but speeds were also quite low. Did take a few hours. So, I mean, we left at what, 94% mm -hmm. and we're down to 14. So yeah, everyone has studded tires around here. Every car, you just hear clicking and clacking. It's just straight ice on the road. So we went nice and nice and gentle everywhere. And uh, you can see that Model S is just covered in, covered in snow. You just have to like inch around because every single piece of pavement is just covered in, covered in, uh, covered in ice. So there we go, charge port open. We're at an older 150 kilowatt one. Look at how, stiff these cables are. I don't even know if I can wrap it around to get in there. Nice. In we go. I will say the CCS connector doesn't fit as nicely as the Tesla connector does in the US. But um, yep, let's let this thing juice up and I think we're going to go for a little walk around town. Looks pretty nice. You know, Alyssa, even here in Norway, you compare Tesla's network to everything else and there's 150 kilowatt station here and then a whole bunch of 150 kilowatt Tesla chargers and then a couple 22s over here, but just Tesla killed it with charging infrastructure around the world, didn't they? Yeah, but there's other gas stations that are more prominent. 
for CCS. Right. Oh, there's a ton of 50 kilowatt chargers all over the country, but to find really high power 350 kilowatt chargers in Norway is actually pretty rare. We're just out for a walk while the car's charging up. Tons of electric cars. It seems like 95% of vehicles plus are on studded Nokian tires. So that is pretty freaking cool. We have a bunch of studded Nokian tires going on our cars back in Colorado. So big shout out to them. The Norwegians love Nokians, as do we. But we're actually driving, driving, walking around looking for some ramen. That is what we're in the mood for. So we're just gonna let the car charge up and uh, it's a pretty empty supercharger. We don't get idle fees if the supercharger is less than half full. If it does start to get filled up, I can always walk over to the car and honestly, I think we'll be fast enough. Oh my God, an MX-30 just drove by. <laughs> I think we'll be fast enough to, uh, to eat before the car finishes charging. So we did not get ramen, but we got some pasta. Noodles. That's right. Looking pretty good here. And we are arriving back after a really good lunch. Just a short walk into downtown. What do you see, Alyssa? What do you think that is? I have no idea what that is. You mean this cabling situation? Yeah. It, 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 and it, oh, it must be a zip line? No way. Okay. okay. Highnorth.no. I don't think they'd put power lines that low. If our viewers know, let us know. That'd be cool if it was a power line. Or I should say a zip line situation. Anyway, yeah, it is a zip line, right? Yeah, totally a zip line. <coughs> well, we were getting pretty close to a full charge, so I kicked on the heater remotely from the app. Not that we needed to avoid idle fees. Let's take a look at what we're at. We are at 98% state of charge. And this, because we did such a deep charge here, it's actually our last charge before we get to Buddha, is how they say it, I think. Yeah. Buddha, but it's it's yeah. spelled Bodo. Buddha. Yeah, <laughs> Buddha belly. Yeah, so we're pretty much good to go here. Deep charges today for this, but honestly, with the speed so low, it takes hours and hours between supercharging stretches that you like want to stop and eat. And so you really only do one or two charges a day here in Norway. Such a different way of road tripping than America where we do lots of high speed and lots of charging. It's completely the opposite. But it says we'll get to our hotel in downtown Buda at 5.30 p.m. So it'll be dark, but should be a beautiful drive. Let's go rip over there. We're about 60 miles from the Arctic Circle. So I wanna stop in at the Arctic Circle Visitor Center. Now let's throw it in drive and go. I just wanted to show you guys a little bit of the surface that we're driving on, which is just straight ice. <laughs> and it's super patchy. Um, and I thought it'd be kind of interesting. So like pretty much everyone here has studded winter tires on their cars. Now studded tires really don't help you in deep snow, but they help you in conditions like this. We're on Nokia non-studded tires, which is still pretty good, but take a look at the braking distance here, just from 40 kilometers an hour full brakes. I mean, so every piece of pavement is just covered and we can definitely move the car. Uh, and it's, I wouldn't say it's dangerous, but it's just like a super layer of ice everywhere we go. So we're not going super fast <laughs> and you can see it's just traction control and definitely patchy depending on where the sun hits everything. But, um, yep, just a layer of ice. So everyone here pretty much runs with studs as uh, would be my preference as well. Big fan of studded tires. Look at this, just straight sliding, pulling out onto the road. Just traction control, that's floored. <laughs> there we go, back up to speed. As long as you're smooth, you're good. Just everything is just a sheet of ice. Take a look at this truck right here. This thing looks sick, 
man truck fully lifted. It's an RV exploration vehicle. That was so sick, wasn't it, Alyssa? Mm -hmm. That's like our Sprinter, but like jumped up to 100 times cooler. Yeah. That was sick. Welcome to the Arctic Circle Raceway. I've seen so many videos of this track. I've always wanted to come here. Didn't actually realize we were going to be driving right by it. It was just about four kilometers off of the E6, the main road. But now we can say we've been here. Check this one off the list. I wish I could do some laps. That would be a blast. But uh, track looks pretty dang icy all the way around. I don't think they drive it in the winter. Maybe they do some winter racing. That would be cool. But uh, it's getting pretty frigid, and we are almost to the Arctic Circle, about 19 miles south of the Arctic Circle right now. But just a cool little stop in here at the Arctic Circle Raceway. Definitely worth the detour. Glad we were able to come here. And we have arrived with that beautiful sunset behind us over here to the Arctic Circle Welcome Center. It is, uh, I mean, it's cold. It's not really that cold. It's like 15 to 17 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, but we just came up the big hill, arrived here. Really cool. I think they're actually closed at the moment. We'll go take a look up close, but I think they might be shutting down for the season. But either way, we made it here to the Arctic Circle Welcome Center. I've seen so many photos of different adventures and, you know, other crazy things here. And I've always wanted to come here. So check this off the bucket list. We're going to continue north, but uh, glad we made it here. Really have always wanted to do it. And instead of going straight to the hotel, we actually were going to get there at minus 4%. It was getting a little bit colder, especially at the top of the hill. And uh, we did some detours, some exploring. So we decided to stop here at the Storjord Supercharger. Uh, if we take a look, it's actually the last charger on the way into Bodo or Buda. I don't even know how to say it, but um, yep, it's that one. And then there's one all the way up here in Inuvet, Norway. So I think we're definitely going to have to charge in the city tonight either way. Um, but definitely let's juice up here, get enough buffer in the pack, pretty icy. And I gotta show you this charging location, getting pretty windy out here. So let's grab the CCS connector. Let's hit the little button, it should open up our port. Come on, we can just hit it. Okay, cables are pretty stiff. There we go, in we go. What's interesting is there are four Tesla superchargers here and then a recharge station and then four more superchargers over that way. Some trucks, stops looks like a pretty cool little rest stop situation as well and i think some cabins where you can stay in but really cool drive over that mountain pass pretty gnarly drive it was awesome points of just not being able to see anything i really kind of enjoyed it personally and then you can see a little electric delivery van right there charging up which is pretty cool but this is a 150 kilowatt charger. We're at 30%. I'm not expecting huge, huge speeds. So let's take a look as to what we are getting. 104 kilowatts. Yep, sounds about right. We'll charge up just so we put in, I don't know, a 10 or 20% buffer on the way into the city. Well, after a quick restroom break, we are ready to rock and roll. Just again, shows how amazing the Tesla network is compared to others. There's just a ton of these 50 kilowatt stations around. Sounds like recharge is upping them to the 250 or 300 kilowatt Alpitronic units in certain areas, but man, Tesla still smoking everyone. They even put a little extra one there on the end. My assumption is in the summertime, this one gets full unplug share. It was showing a lot of full chargers. So actually before we unplug, I just want to take a look at our efficiency on the last run. And I want to talk about the new energy app that is coming into the cars. So we are at 80% state of charge. So more than enough to get to uh, the city and let this thing sit overnight. But let's take a look. So our since last charge, we did 200 and 11 kilometers and 44 kilowatt hours. That's from when we did the pretty deep charge and 208 watt hour per kilometer. Getting cold, but again, distance, you know, very rarely, actually, if ever, are we over 100 kilometers an hour. So really low speed. This is the new energy app. If I come over here to drive and it says we use 2.1% more than estimated, but again, 
I had played around with some of the nav inputs and things like that. So what we're going to do is actually cancel out this. We're going to start a new one to our hotel, which is this right there. Boom. And we're gonna take a look at its prediction. Let's see what its prediction is. So it thinks a 47% arrival versus, if I go trip here, so it thinks we'll get there at 46.6%. Here's its prediction as to how we go. Let's unplug and let's see how we do compared to what it thinks in trip projection. Man, they did up the charging speed at 80% to a little bit over 50 kilowatts, but honestly, not by much. So icy over here, just have to be careful. And uh, yep, let's unplug, cut out, and we are gonna just cruise on over. It's nighttime. We do have a light bar on the front of the Model 3. I just wanna show you really quick. Um, we have it here, but it's actually malfunctioning because the headlights are starting to do this matrix function, which I think just came in the newest update. But every time it starts to do matrix function, the light bar goes on. And I think it's just not programmed properly. But the annoying thing is it does matrix function even without selecting auto high beams. So I wish I could turn that off. So now it's projecting 47.3% because we charged up a little bit more. So let's see what we actually arrive with. Maybe we'll see some Northern lights as well. We gotta keep our eye in the sky, but it uh, looks like we have a tailwind as well. If you see that, the wind looks to be blowing north. Interesting. Anyway, let's, let's G-O. Heading north to Bodo or Buda or Bado or however you say it. We're heading that way. And I should be quiet because Alyssa is sleeping. Well, we have gotten close to the water and it has warmed up. No northern lights on this trip. Hopefully we'll see them uh, tomorrow while driving though. Let's take a look. We did 165 watt hour per kilometer. We only used 19 kilowatt hours to get here. And if we compare that to our trip, we actually used 5% less than it was expecting. So not exactly sure why. It doesn't even say, it says elevation we gained some range because we lost it but it should have known that i don't know anyway very interesting i guess i was just more efficient on this stretch than i was in others it was a slower stretch so we were in a little bit more traffic but yep we made it here to bodo or buddha or something like that and wow cool spot for sure so tomorrow i guess we got to go back out to the e6 and then up so perhaps we'll see if they have charging at this hotel if not, we'll find a DC charger around and juice it up before leaving town. Very nice. This is at our hotel. We just walked downstairs and good food. Northern lights in one hour. We're going to go look for them. Well, we were just minutes away from getting a parking ticket. Yeah, good morning. Good morning and Kyle saved the day. Yeah, I walked out just in time and I'm like, hey, that's our car. Don't give us a ticket. And she's like, okay. I, she didn't speak any English. <laughs> she's so, like, oh, I just want to get out of here. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so we are going. We had a great stay at this quality hotel in, in Buda, I think is how you say it. And um, You still haven't figured that out. No, I think that's how people have been saying it. Okay. Buda. Buda. And we are heading to, well... I don't know where we're heading to really. At least to Alta. We're either gonna go to Tromso or Alta. But it's gonna be a long day. Today we gotta put down some miles. It's 9 a.m. It actually says we can get to the Innovet Supercharger. Oh, at 11%, so we don't actually need to even charge down here. I've been kind of wanting to not use the Supercharger network. It's so good that you just can. Uh, mostly because I want to showcase the benefits of having CCS on your Tesla, um, where like everyone can charge on everything. You see non-Teslas charging on superchargers, you see Teslas charging on public infrastructure. But honestly, we've just been using the supercharger network and we haven't been able to use public chargers other than that ChemPower one the other day. Mm -hmm. So, um, Leaf. Yep, Leaf. A lot of EVs, even up here in the Arctic, it doesn't really get that cold here in this city. And uh, the reason is it's so close to the seaport. So I think um, in the winter time, they definitely get snow. They definitely get a couple days of full darkness, but it's not like the whole winter is pitch black and it's not like it's that snowy. As we go more inland, they get a lot more snow, but everyone's car still looks like this, completely dirty, which is really hilarious. 
But um, yeah, I, t I think we're gonna take a quick lap around the city, just do a little exploring, and we should arrive at 11% to the next uh, supercharger. Yeah, there is this one place that was really recommended to go to, and it was like a dessert place to try one of their dessert things, and I think we might need to do that. Oh, okay, perhaps we will. But either way, let's kick on the clips, let's cruise around the city, and let's uh, head north as far as we can today. And we have arrived in an icy parking lot at 6% state of charge. Dirty camera again. Version two superchargers over there. Version three is where we're backing into. So we'll have the full 250 kilowatts. Hopefully it warmed up enough for it. But you got it here. You can use these lines right here. Yeah, you just gotta put it right in between the uh, post there, Alyssa. Nice. And it can breach from there. Nice. Well, thanks for driving. Been having some trouble sleeping here. Why? Yeah, just not feeling great. So, appreciate you driving. But, but uh, yeah, let's get this thing plugged in. And uh, we'll charge up enough to make it to end of it. It says it wants a 25-minute charge here. So, not a very deep one. And... See the full 250. Yep, yes. nice. Spoke too soon there. 252. Snapping. 254. For like, for like two seconds. Sweet. Nice. We are just heading over to this shell station over here. Maybe grab a little snack, some waters. Just something to keep us going. We just need a, actually a pretty short charging session here. I just looked and then we're gonna hop to the next charger. So I think by the time we get back to the car, we'll be ready to unplug and it's only 140 kilometers to the next charger. And uh, yeah, we're just gonna add a spec style it, but it all depends on how quickly we can get our stuff. Almost no one out on the roads today. It's pretty, pretty quiet here in Northern Norway. No noise, no wind, just the sound of footsteps on ice pretty crazy well we just got back from the store a couple more coffees i think i'm feeling good enough to drive thanks for taking on that first leg this morning there was a frozen model 3 next to us it's thawing out a little bit now and uh yeah it shows a seven percent arrival in Sedermo in norway and so essentially we are just so you get an idea of where we started how far we're going we were over here in bodo buddha somewhere why doesn't it show town names anymore? I don't know. We were down here somewhere, over here. And then we came up to Innovet, and now we're continuing up to this one, Sittermoen. I'm like, what's over here? Not sure. Tind. Tind. 
But it'd be cool to go through all of these little spots, wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. Yep. So E6 goes all the way down. So is this where we were then? Yeah. Uh, I don't think so. Where? No, we don't want Moorana. We want to see the, yeah, progress that we made today. Ah, I see. So we came over and up. So that's what we've done so far. And now we are heading to Supercharger Cinnamon. Yep, 10% arrival. Let's go. The car wants to keep charging. I don't, especially not at 84 kilowatts. So it says three minutes remaining. We're going to head out and run this sucker low. What do you say? Peter going. Let's do it. Off we go. Just need a quick top up. Nice. And then the uh, supercharger here is just covered in ice. I think the cooling is broken. Hear it buzzing? <laughs> anyway. In we go, into drive, visuals on. Let's do it. Good. Well, if only we were a few minutes earlier, we could have made the ferry, but we missed it by about 10 minutes. And the E6 ferry, which is over here, typically runs pretty frequently, but this one's actually out of service at the moment so you have to go from drag to kajopsvik <laughs> but basically there's no other alternative this is the ferry we have to take and it leaves every hour roughly on the hour so we should have a 1 p.m ferry so it looks like we're kind of just stuck here at the port for the next 50 minutes or so and uh, perhaps we should go into town drive around a little bit i don't know what do you think Alyssa? i think we should do some exploring yeah, we can explore. I think there's a restaurant right over there. We wanted to eat, but I'm not too hungry. Yeah, no, me either. But uh, yeah, I mean, I guess worst case, we can just kind of jut out, make a U-turn and head out. Mm -hmm. Let's go explore. Well, after about a one hour wait, we are ready to jump onto the ferry. We did drive around town a little bit. There really wasn't much to see here in drag. That's right. Now we're heading to Kjopsvik. <clears throat> We saw some Russians get off the uh, boat heading the other way. That was pretty interesting. Only a couple times have I seen Russian license plates before. I've never been to Russia, but I'd like to go at some point. I think it'd be kind of interesting. And um, yeah, here we go. Jumping on the ferry. Take a look at this. I guess I don't really know where we're supposed to go. I, mean, I guess this guy guides us when we get on. I don't think this is an electric ferry. Sometimes they are. He says go full left. So we will do that. We'll go all the way up to the front, I guess. And we are heading off, leaving, pulling out of the dock. Maybe this is a plug-in hybrid. I know a few of these things are. We'll have to explore a little bit. Let's see if there's a way inside. I think there is over here. Yep, toilet, all this stuff. Inside now. We're on a boat. Cool. Very sweet.
And after what seems like a really long time without charging, we have arrived at 9%, but our distance was really low. It just takes forever to cover distance up here. No highways. Only did 193 kilometers. And maybe because the sun went down early at about 245, the sun was set. It's just accentuated, but it feels like it just took forever. So we have a recharge station. Those used to be Fortums. And we have the Tesla Supercharger version two, 150 kilowatts. So there we go. Cable's really frozen. In you go. And I think we're actually gonna stay in Tromso tonight. I think the original plan was to get up to Alta, but we wouldn't get there till about 11 p.m. And uh, yeah, there's no real need to push it. So we're gonna stay in Tromso. And yeah, I guess we gotta find some dinner. We are both starving. It's about 4.45 p.m. right now, something like that. Oh, sorry, 4.15. And this parking lot is just a sheet of ice. It's just hard to walk or drive. No wonder why literally every car has studded tires. We are just sliding everywhere. I really wish we had uh, studded tires on this thing. Even though I love these Nokian R3s, I would much rather have the, the Nokian 10 EV tires because in the ice, it's just nice to have studs. I'm gonna keep climbing on. Let's go here. Keep climbing on at 70 degrees, heated seats on, because we are gonna go get some hot dogs at, is it a Circle K or the Esso? Esso, hopefully they have a little situation there. And uh, yeah, up to 41%. Just so you can see our plan for the evening, we are gonna go to the Clarion Hotel. It shows a 1% arrival. The hotel does have charging, I'm not sure if we can activate it. We do have our type two cable somewhere in the back. Um, and so we're gonna just put in a little bit extra buffer just in case we're not able to charge. But if we are, we'll do a full charge tonight. It's really cold out here, isn't it? Yeah, no, our hot dogs are getting cold. Yeah, hot dogs are getting cold. Chili. Well, we have already charged enough to make it into Tromso, but I think we're going to eat some hot dogs and then leave. That'll give us plenty of buffer for anything that might pop up. But uh, yep, just the only one charging here. A lot of open spaces. And I believe most of these superchargers up here are open to the public, so no one's really using these recharge stations, especially with the superchargers being so cheap. All right, hot dogs eaten. That was pretty good, wasn't it? Yeah, I don't think I like the mustard, though. Oh, It's like a sweet, spicy, hot. It seems like the only thing Norwegians eat are hot dogs. Yeah, that's it. Well, I mean, it's just gas station food to eat hot dogs. Yeah. Yeah. Really good, but I guess that's where we spend and most of our time, charging. Is. A waffle uh, with ham it, on the inside. Is or it ham or is it cheese? I'm not really sure. That looks disgusting. Well, gotta try it. So we're at 75% state of charge, only doing 62 kilowatts. We just finished eating. It's two hours, 20 minutes to the Clarion, 7 p.m., 15 degrees, and that's after the car has been sitting here charging. So it's probably closer to 10 degrees or less because the temperature sensor, of course, does heat up a little bit during the charging process, I've noticed. Unplugged. Man, even the 150 kilowatt chargers are pretty fast. And, uh, yep. Nice Scania truck going for it. Lights on. Oh, one thing I taped up the light bar on this because it we, you know, I'll just do a whole other maybe explainer on that later on or tomorrow. I'll show you. But basically the light bar kept act, acting up with the matrix function, except I don't think the car has matrix function. I think the light bar was trying to do its own matrix function and all it did was just blind everyone. So we uh, put some tape over the light bar and we haven't been flashed yet. So I think we're good. All right, so time to head out just on snow and icy roads. You can see just spinning <laughs> full send, full drifty drift mode here. Woohoo! 
Just snow and ice everywhere. Gonna take it nice and easy going into Trump so. So we've just checked into our hotel and now we're looking for some parking in this parking nice garage. Hotel, actually. Yeah, the Clarion. Clarion, yeah. Yeah, they have a shrimp festival going on there. Yeah. Or, or business thing, which is odd. Yeah, so we heard there's four chargers in here. So we're kind of just cruising around looking for this the charging like points, a, but I doubt crap we'll show find here. it. This is crazy. This is Kind yeah, of weird. Tromso is jammed packed today. I don't know what is going on. It's the shrimp festival, man. It could be. I mean, that was a lot of people at the shrimp festival. Prawns. Prawns. The National Institute of Cold Water Water Prawns or something like that. Yeah, it's, it's here. Look at this. These are like bunkers. This is crazy. This is bizarre. I've never seen a parking like this. Alright, we need to focus. Yeah. Bye. Thank you.